Thank you, Phil. Our next speaker does not need any introduction. Dr. Fahad Al-Mubarak is the chairman and managing director of Morgan Stanley Saudi Arabia. During most of his career, Fahad has held executive position providing investment management and corporate finance advisory services. He played a leading role in the privatization of Saudi Telecom. However, his talents and experience have extended well beyond. As engineer, professor, and a former member of the kingdom's Majlis Shura, which means he's also a politician. Fahad today is going to address um, the panel and speak specifically from the investors' view and from the banking view inside the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Thank you, Hudam. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Jamian. Uh, for those who will be monitoring the uh, development of the program of this conference, you will notice that I'm the latest addition to this panel. And uh, I only knew uh, uh, one day before this conference that um, I will be addressing this distinguished uh, uh, <coughs> audience. So uh, I. Uh, uh, just put together some few points to share with you, and hopefully that uh, in the Q&A we could uh, discuss more points. And many of the points I put together here uh, were uh, about Saudi Arabia. And as I listened to uh, Dr. Mohammed and Phil, I started crossing them out. And uh, I had this iPad to do that. Now I'm being technology uh, literate. And um, at the end, I found that uh, the only thing left was two words, hello and goodbye. So I don't have much to say. Last night um, <coughs> uh, we were uh, talking uh, uh, as Hudam was giving us clear instructions to Dr. Mohammed and myself about being disciplined. And she said, I'm going to have only 10 minutes for each of you to talk, and they will do a Q&A. Dr. Mohammed said, no, I think I have a few more points that I'd like to bring across. I need 15. I said, great, take mine. So, <laughs> so I gave up five minutes to Mohammed, and then the other five, I leave it for Q&A. <coughs> anyway. Uh, to uh, talk about uh, <clears throat> uh, the topic of this uh, uh, session, which is uh, stability of the economic, uh, uh, the global economy, and uh, the shared responsibility, I think uh, uh, from a Saudi point of view, uh, I have some few points about uh, for those guests who don't know much about Saudi Arabia, but I would assume that they are, you are here. Uh, you already know something about Saudi Arabia being the largest economy in the Middle East, the most uh, vibrant, uh, and uh, a population of 27 million, uh, highest growth, uh, also one of the highest growth uh, in the population, 20% uh, of the oil reserve, uh, and a large capital market, and a very strong uh, banking system. When we talk about uh, <coughs> economic stability, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia have played two major roles, one of an international role and one of a domestic role. In the international role, uh, Saudi Arabia, as uh, Dr. Al-Jasser have stated earlier, our biggest role in helping the uh, global economy to stabilize was the role as uh, an oil producer, a major oil producer. <clears throat> With our uh, access capacity that was generated for the sole purpose to balance oil supply demand uh, in the market, that uh, put Saudi Arabia as the swing producer uh, uh, in the oil market. Uh, a recent example, when uh, Libya uh, stopped producing, Saudi Arabia uh, came out very quickly and uh, provided the additional oil to stabilize the, uh, the supply. Uh, 600 million uh, uh, barrels, uh, 600,000 barrels per day were missing, and Saudi Arabia uh, held and bring that to the market. If Saudi Arabia did not play this role during the latest uh, uh, crisis in the Middle East, uh, and uh, we would uh, probably see oil prices uh, 120, 130, uh, but thanks to this uh, role. Now, Maintaining this uh, uh, access uh, capacity is not cheap. Saudi Arabia has uh, 
invest, uh, Saudi Aramco have uh, and continue to invest over $50 billion uh, in maintaining and expanding its uh, oil uh, production capacity only to offer uh, this role and maintain a price that is stable, stable uh, and is balanced for both producers and consumers alike. As a matter of fact, Saudi Arabia goes beyond that in, that, in terms of its role in oil. King Abdullah uh, have created uh, a very important uh, oil producer, uh, oil uh, or organization of uh, producing and consuming countries uh, established in Saudi Arabia, where both uh, consuming and producing countries would uh, uh, discuss together and communicate the right policies and the right uh, price level uh, that will maintain continuation of investment in the oil uh, business as well as <coughs> the uh, 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 continue the growth in developed and developing uh, countries. Uh, recently, King Abdullah has also created a very, very important organization called CAPSARC, King Abdullah for Petroleum Research and Science Center. The sole purpose of such uh, uh, organization is to help develop alternative energies in recognition of uh, Saudi Arabia that some of the oil revenue that we receive uh, should be reinvested in finding other alternative oil uh, energy sources, renewable uh, resources, as oil is a finite material that will run away, run uh, out very quickly, and uh, the whole globe, not only including Saudi Arabia, will be out of energy. So we are hopeful that uh, such uh, entity will help uh, produce uh, new uh, ideas for alternative energy. Uh, Saudi Arabia also role in the IMF, in the World Bank, in the G20, also additional role to stabilize uh, and contribute and share the responsibility uh, globally. Saudi Arabia is not only in the, limited to the international uh, role, but also in the regional. Saudi Arabia plays a very important and vital role in supporting uh, Arab and Muslim countries through different entities such as the uh, Islamic uh, Development Bank, where Saudi Arabia is 20% uh, contributor, a bank that have helped develop many of the businesses in needy Muslim uh, countries around the world. Uh, and uh, this bank enjoys a triple A uh, rating and continue to grow and develop the uh, Muslim world. Also, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia works very closely with the IMF to further develop the Arab Monetary Fund uh, to develop uh, ideas and uh, programs uh, and investments in the uh, Arab world. So as you notice, and also Saudi Arabia is a part of GCC, so international, Muslim, Arab world, and GCC, Saudi Arabia plays a very important role. This is the international, but more importantly, Saudi Arabia plays a very strong role in the domestic uh, level. Uh, and in the domestic level, every time when you talk about uh, economic stability, what are we talking about? We're talking about the financial sector stability. And financial sector, as you all know, made up mainly of four subsectors: banking, capital markets, insurance, and mortgage. And uh, uh, this reform and uh, uh, Saudi Arabian role in developing these uh, uh, four sectors did not just start only in 2008 or when the crisis came or uh, post uh, um, uh, other crises, but this reform has started uh, more than 20 and 30 years ago uh, in different programs. Uh, uh, we have a very, very strong uh, uh, banking sector, uh, thanks to uh, SAMA, the regulator, um, who have put very prudent rules and strong enforcement mechanism. Uh, and that's why we are able, our banks were able to uh, uh, survive during the subprime situation and also uh, not be affected uh, uh, much uh, due to the recent uh, uh, debt crisis in Europe. Um, and uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, the monetary uh, SAMA uh, emphasized the role uh, of supervisory uh, in terms of banks' proprietary investments that has to be uh, uh, managed with a proper level of risk.
to maintain capital uh, to be lent uh, to the uh, needed uh, parts of the economy. Uh, also, uh, during uh, some of the crises, Saudi Arabia uh, Monetary Agency have uh, reduced the capital reserve required by a bank to allow more uh, liquidity to lend to small businesses and medium-sized businesses. Uh, and uh, uh, there are many majors also deposited a lot of uh, money in the banks to uh, offer the liquidity uh, that uh, uh, might be affected in a short, time, a short term by what's happening internationally. Uh, this resulted in a very strong uh, banking uh, sector that continue to help develop uh, corporate Saudi Arabia and offer the uh, lending uh, required. And um, uh, in general, Saudi Arabia is an under-leveraged uh, uh, country, both as a government, uh, from a government point of view, as we heard the governor went down from 100% GDP, uh, debt to GDP, uh, down to 7%. Uh, similar situation, we see Saudi corporates also being under uh, leveraged, which allow them to expand during uh, difficult times. Uh, not only government and corporate, but also individuals are uh, uh, under leveraged, and this will allow much uh, robust uh, uh, economy to sustain uh, lack of liquidity during difficult times. The second, more, most also another more important uh, part of the financial sector uh, was uh, the capital market. And uh, <clears throat> until recently, SAMA uh, incubated the stock exchange. And uh, back in uh, 2005, the Capital Market Authority, a new regulator was uh, uh, established uh, with uh, world-class rules and regulations. Uh, that extend from authorizing persons to listing rules to uh, dealing with insider uh, trading to uh, uh, prudent uh, capitals. Um, and uh, as a result, uh, the number of companies that offer services in Saudi Arabia went from 10 uh, to over 100 uh, recently uh, in terms of uh, advisors and brokerage uh, and uh, other services. Uh, the uh, uh, also number of listed companies uh, over the last five years doubled from uh, 75 to close to 150 uh, number of companies. Along with it is the capital uh, is the size of the market. 50% uh, of the market cap basically in petrochemical 30% and banks 20%. Uh, these are very large uh, companies and banks. Uh, and their performance is, is, is excellent. The overall, uh, there are 15 sectors within the Saudi market. Uh, the overall performance of the Saudi market is good. Over the last 10 years, it has been 11.4%. Uh, the Saudi market uh, year to date outperformed MSCI world and MSCI uh, emerging markets. <coughs> um, Saudi Arabia trades at a premium to many of the emerging markets. And if uh, one would ask, well, that means Saudi Arabia market is expensive. Why should I invest in it? Well, it had always maintained that position. It always trades at a premium. Why? Uh, this is a reflection of the strength of the economy, uh, the strength of the government, as well as an excellent performance of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the listed companies. And um, additionally, also being relatively closed to the, GC, to the Saudis and GCC and some uh, internationals through swaps and peanuts. Uh, the opening of the Saudi market has been an evolutionary process um, where it started as uh, uh, only for Saudis and then the GCC were allowed in internationals through uh, funds and uh, recently in the last couple of years the uh, international investors can invest in swaps and peanuts where they can get 100% of the economic benefits of those holdings. Uh, altogether, <clears throat> this offer uh, a very strong capital market, uh, transparency, corporate governance, uh, uh, and uh, timely reporting is one of the most important uh, rules uh, in the capital market and is followed by uh, uh, companies. The number of research 
uh, on Saudis quadruple over the last couple of years since uh, we, the internationals started investing in Saudi Arabia with swaps and peanuts. Uh, the other two sectors within the financial system is uh, insurance, which is, relatively speaking, a young uh, sector. Uh, over the last uh, three, four years, uh, more uh, insurance company, in addition to the uh, one big national uh, company, uh, uh, started uh, working in Saudi Arabia. Most of them are, all of them are actually listed in the stock market. Uh, and uh, mainly the two parts they offer is healthcare and automotive insurance. Very vibrant and again, in this sector to avoid any problems, uh, uh, SAMA being the regulator for insurance have put uh, very prudent rules in how to manage and govern those uh, companies uh, and more importantly, how to manage uh, investments of, uh, and, and assets of those companies. Uh, mortgage is quite limited. We are all waiting for uh, the new mortgage law to come out. Uh, we hope, it has, we've been waiting for it for a while, but we hope it will come. And when it comes, I think it will unlock uh, the development of uh, housing, uh, which is needed in Saudi Arabia. Uh, there are many other uh, points that I could share with you, but I will uh, leave them uh, uh, to the Q&A. Um, uh, but uh, just let me tell you one thing that uh, you know, I tell you all the good news about Saudi Arabia. Uh, well, Saudi Arabia uh, is not a country without challenges. We do also have challenges of our own. Uh, unemployment is uh, uh, relatively high, uh, and uh, uh, we still need uh, to diversify our economy away from oil. Uh, this has been happening, and the government have put many programs to do this. As a matter of fact, um, Lately, more uh, non-oil sector, the private sector, have been growing much faster than the oil sector within Saudi Arabia. Another thing is housing. Uh, is, uh, Saudi Arabia needs about 200,000 uh, houses uh, over the next 10 years. The government, as you have heard uh, uh, Philip earlier said, uh, the, announced 500,000 houses to be built for low income. We believe with the mortgage law and those initiatives, uh, we will get uh, those issues uh, to be resolved. Um, thank you very much.